Welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show which delights in dishonesty. And on Lee Mack's team tonight, a man whose sole purpose in life is to make ordinary women look beautiful. He's the fashion equivalent of eight pints of lager. It's Gok Wan! <laughs> A man who, frankly, needs no introduction. So instead, let's spend the time delighting in his famous face. <laughs> From Game of Thrones, Charles Dance! <laughs> and on David Mitchell's team tonight, a comic most famous for her role as Dobby on Peep Show, alongside the supremely talented Robert Webb and some <laughs> other bloke I can't remember the name of. It's Izzy Sooty! <laughs> An actor who recently starred in episodes and is soon to be the voice of Postman Pat. I don't know where he finds the time. Presumably he gets up early in the morning just as day is dawning. <laughs> Stephen Langham! <laughs> and so to round one home truths where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Stephen is first up. Off you go. Whenever I eat beans on toast, I always imagine I'm a rescue helicopter, and with every forkful, I'm airlifting tiny bald men <laughs> on a raft to safety. <laughs> what do you think? How long have you done this for? Since I was about eight. Right. Any reason you do this apart from just keeping yourself amused? It's that my auntie Bridget, who used to live with us. Yes. Is this going to be a tragic story? She's bald, <laughs> she was on a raft, <laughs> she never survived, and it's our way of remembering her. She was on a raft with 400 bald men yeah. <laughs> who needed Tr rescuing. Trust me, we all know your auntie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You say raft, you mean mattress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I hope she's not watching. Uh, she's busy, don't she, worry. She used to live with us. <laughs> <laughs> My auntie Bridget yeah. used to live in our house and she would often have to look after us if our parents were out. You know, I wasn't a good eater. I was a very skinny kid. Uh, and she used to try all sorts of stuff and this is one technique she had. She used to do all sorts of other things as well. Like what? What else would she do? <laughs> <laughs> Spaghetti was, uh, you were trying to, you know, you were throwing a, 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 like a line, a rope down to rescue people at the bottom of a pit. Uh, fish fingers were coaches. <laughs> fish fingers were what? They were coaches on the motorway. And Here comes the coach, chop it in half. <laughs> <laughs> she's, quite, she's quite funny, my Auntie Bridget, she's quite odd. Do you think the bald men in question that were going to die on the raft were, felt glad that they'd ended in a more comfortable position of going down your throat into your stomach? <laughs> Well, Did you feel that was a safer place for them? Well that, well, that was the helicopter they were coming into. Oh, your mouth was the helicopter? Yeah, my mouth is the helicopter. That's a raft going down. That's the raft. The raft is they're sitting on the fork, which is a raft. No, no, the raft, up, the raft is the toast, toast surely. The toast is a raft. No, 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 because... Yeah. No, What's the toast? Yeah. No, the toast is the boat they were in on the ocean. <laughs> it's now covered in... Why would they be on a raft? If they're on a raft, they're already rescued. They're already OK. They're but already... helicopters don't lower down rafts. Oh, thanks. Well, you've just ruined an entire <laughs> lifetime story for me. Another, Another man comes attached to the rope and he picks up each individual bald man on the raft. I've seen it. Every time I've seen loads of bald men dying at sea, <laughs> and a man comes out of a helicopter and individually picks them up. So if you'd have done your backstory and you were a proper actor, you would know <laughs> that you're supposed to be taking one beat. That's what Charles Dance would have done. Yeah, he'd have taken because he does his research. Yeah, but and that's why he's not going to be the voice of Postman Bat. <laughs> So what do you think? What do we what think, think, Charles? Are we buying this story? Reluctantly, I think I am buying really? this story. You think actually. it might be true? I do actually think it sounds quite realistic. I think that in a child's brain you might make up all of these scenarios. I don't think he was eating the beans. I mean, look at his hair. He was only eating the crust of that toast. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's true, don't we? You think it's yeah. true? Yeah. Charles says it's true? Yeah. I'll go on and we'll say okay. it's true. You're saying it's true. <laughs> Stephen Mangan, truth or lie? It is, in fact, a lie. Oh, 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 nice. 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 it's a lie. 
Uh, when eating beans on toast, Stephen doesn't imagine he's a rescue helicopter airlifting tiny bald men <laughs> to safety. Uh, Charles, you're next. <clears throat> a little chimpanzee once came to my house for tea. <laughs> David's team, what do you think? A, a little chimpanzee. How little? A, a tiny chimp, about this. Hi. And did it come alone? It preceded um, an expected guest. Was that gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> what did it eat? Uh, well, we tried um, Marmite because it was a Sunday afternoon and we were having sort of tea and Marmite toast, uh, and that's what my kids liked. Um, but it turned its nose up at that, so <laughs> we gave it cheese and tomato sandwiches and to open them up and took the inside and seemed to be quite happy with that. Probably on a no carbs diet. <laughs> <laughs> What's a chimpanzee doing? Coming round Good quest to your house for tea. <laughs> yeah. She was with the friend who was expected, and the friend who was expected was running late, and she sent the chimpanzee on ahead. <laughs> so, when... Did, so, did the chimpanzee ring the doorbell or knock on the door? Or... Knocked on the door. And you <laughs> answer the door, and there well, is... I, I went to the door, and yeah. my wife said, who's that? And I said, it's a chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> She said, what does it want? <laughs> um, <laughs> and the chimpanzee was doing this. <laughs> and I said, I think it wants tea. <laughs> she said, well, ask it in. How did the chimpanzee get to your house? Um, I ordered a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a courageous man. If I was answering the door and I saw a chimpanzee, yeah. I wouldn't invite it in for tea. <laughs> I'd be afraid. I'm, I'd, I'm not keen on wasps. Really? And they're, and they're much, much smaller than chimpanzees. <laughs> who, who was the friend? Was it Michael Jackson? I mean, who... <laughs> who were you receiving? It was a lady that I had worked with um, quite some time before this afternoon. Why did she have a monkey? Because she, did, she, she had very few friends. All right, David, what are you thinking? Th this sounds I think it's peculiar. true. I, at the moment, I think it's true. What do you think? I don't know. I want to know why she would send it first. A sense of fun, surely. Is it a bit of a joke? Go up there, knock on his door, it'll be amusing. <laughs> what do you think? What I think, I think Charles Dance, a chimp in a cheese sandwich, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> what were you going to I think mean? we're going to go true, though. You're going to say true, yeah? Yeah. OK, Charles Dance, your chimp story. Were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I'm sorry to say that it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. A little chimpanzee once went to Charles's house for tea. Gok, you're next. Right, OK. Every Sunday, I spend four hours planning the 20 outfits I'll wear the coming week. <laughs> David's tea. Do you lay them out or do you just picture them? I rack them. So in, in my bedroom, I've had some special bars put up. Oh, yeah, and I remember they... those. Yeah. <laughs> the hours I yeah. can vouch for this. So I have one which is about five foot eight. OK, and then I have another one which is about four foot high. OK, so when you put a pair of trousers on or a jacket or a top, it then looks like you. I occasionally, if I'm very busy, I photograph them. And yeah, then I, I keep remember them that bit me. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and explain why you need 20 out, because I'm thinking even if you... I, I mean, I'm a tremendous slovenly slut. <laughs> it I feels like you're phoning Babe Station and someone else has picked <laughs> up. <Yeah. laughs> Sorry, can I speak to Sheila, the regular one? <laughs> 
<laughs> I often uh, wear the same outfit in the afternoon as in the morning. I could be filming a series, and then I might be filming three different shows in one day, so I'll need three different outfits to represent three different episodes. I might be going out for lunch, and then I'll be doing something in the afternoon, so I'll get changed from a lunch outfit, because I don't want to be too dressed up to walk the dog. And it's also done by a weather report as well. What? The Met Office are fools. <laughs> Do you go through with your galoshes so, in bright sunshine <laughs> on a Friday evening? You're presenting yourself as someone who plans things very carefully, thinks yeah. things through very carefully, but your very act of planning is in itself badly thought through. <laughs> because on a Monday, you've just you only planned it the day before, you've got a good sense of what the weather's going to be like, your, your plans for the day are probably better formed. So on Mondays, that's absolutely fine. I know what I need in the morning, the afternoon, and, you know, outfits three and four. <laughs> but come Friday, the weather's all to cock, the dog has died, <laughs> you've dropped two scenes you're supposed to film on the Wednesday, you've got to fit them in on the Friday. But I've taken photographs. So even if I've planned a Thursday PM outfit and I decide I don't want to wear it, I just flick through my phone and I might want to choose a Saturday PM outfit. And Lee, I go back to it. What? How long do you spend on a Sunday <laughs> getting your outfits ready for the week? What I do is I look at the seven or eight or maybe sometimes nine dirty underpants in the bag. <laughs> I work out exactly, I spread them out on the bed. <laughs> I look and I think, which can take a fourth, fourth trip? <laughs> <laughs> David, I'm curious to, to put the same question to you. Sunday night comes around, you've had a smashing day, country file is finished, and now you're thinking, <laughs> you're thinking, I've got a plan ahead. How yeah. much time and thought goes into it for you? Well, I always wear basically the same thing every day, so none. You're, you're like Batman in that respect, aren't yeah, you? Yes, I, I, I see myself as a superhero and I have basically one outfit. Which, not, you know, and it, What's it, your it, superpower? The ability to decide what to wear very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking, David? Does I yes, think it yeah. sounds very plausible. It does sound plausible, but is it too plausible? I think it's true. David's team thinks it's true. Gok, were you telling the truth? Or were you telling a lie? I... Are you I, trying to work out what to wear before you... <laughs> <laughs> I... was telling the truth. Oh, good. Oh, great. Uh, Izzy, you're next. Because my mum deemed Scooby-Doo too scary to watch... I was only ever allowed to listen to it. <laughs> Please, team, what do you, what do you make of that? <laughs> How would you do that? Would you have to be in another room, or...? I was allowed to be in the room where the TV was. Um, I had to wear a blindfold. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> it was a tea towel. But it, you know, I was small, so I had a small head. It went round my head. So you, you she tied the tea towel round your eyes, in what can only be described as a hostage situation. <laughs> <laughs> and then she left you in the room. She stayed in the room to make sure that I didn't take it off. Why didn't she just say close your eyes and make sure you don't open them? I think she just, she just wanted to be sure that I wouldn't Peep. be able to. Yeah, because uh, like she would sit next to me, but. She wanted to watch it. It was one of her favourite programmes. So... Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's focus on that bit for a moment. <laughs> Your mum's favourite programme was Scooby-Doo? Yeah, amongst other things. What other things? Amongst the news. Well, um... she obviously wasn't quite sure what kind of person she was, obviously. <laughs> what kind of stuff do you like? Oh, you know, the news, Scooby-Doo, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Gladiators. <laughs> 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 and would she do that thing they do for, you know, the audio description? Would she say, <laughs> would she say, and now Scooby-Doo is running away? Because <laughs> it's quite a hard show to follow audibly. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see it. <laughs> you have to rely on seeing it, don't you? Wait, wait. In the words of Rob Brydon, I'm doing Scooby-Doo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think what you were trying to do was... <clears throat> Here we go. Hummy? <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Seven series in and he can't let me have one moment, can he? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you're blindfold in the living room. And how old are you? 
uh, it stopped when I was about 16 and just... 16? <laughs> so at 16, your mum would tie a tea towel around your head when Scooby-Doo was on? Yeah, but by then we just liked the ritual of it. It was just... I think it was a ritual now. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever tempted to phone Childline? <laughs> well, you, you couldn't find couldn't the phone, find could you? you? <laughs> Now, what about Scrappy-Doo? If Scooby-Doo was a bit heavy and some of the issues were a little bit, you know, difficult to deal with, Scrappy-Doo was a lot, a lot more accessible, wasn't it? How, how did she feel about that? Is that um, a kind of spin-off? Is that a kind of spin-off? <laughs> it's Scrappy-Doo! It, it is... Look what you've done to my voice! <laughs> it's it's Scrappy-Doo, it's the little version of... There's no point saying little. She couldn't see it. <laughs> well, it was a smaller dog with a... <laughs> <If> you... <laughs> Yeah, but if you can't see it, that could be a Great Dane on helium. She doesn't know the size of the thing, does she? In fact, it was a Great Dane, wasn't it? Scooby-Doo. I don't know. I never I saw Scooby-Doo. The Marmaduke is a Great Dane. She never saw Scooby-Doo. No, no. <laughs> Are you my dad, Charles? <laughs> Which Charles Did you ask me if I was your father? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your mother? <laughs> So, what are you thinking? Truth or lie? I think she's lying. You think she's lying? I think she's lying. I think she's lying. Well, then I must go with my team and say okay, she's lying. Okay, you say it's a lie. Izzy, truth or lie? It is a lie. Uh, yes. yes, it's a lie. Um, Izzy wasn't only allowed to listen to Scooby Doo because her mum deemed it too scary to watch. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Hannah. <laughs> Stephen, first of all, please, what is Hannah to you? Yes, this is Hannah. Uh, we used to bamboozle our miserable neighbour by adding an item of clothing to his washing line <laughs> after he pegged his laundry out. <laughs> uh, Izzy, how do you know Hannah? This is Hannah. In order to impress a boy, we once competed to see who could eat the most ants. <laughs> And finally, David, your relationship with Hannah. Uh, this is Hannah. Last year, she bought a pub and named it the Mitchell and Glove. <laughs> and I gave her my blessing to use my face on the pub sign. <laughs> Please, team, where to begin? Why is it the Mitchell and... What, where's the glove come into this? Um, I think it, it was originally called the, uh, the Boxers. And as in the, the dog or the fighters? And as in the, the gloved fighters. Well, it's so. an obvious progression, isn't it? Yeah. Boxing, David Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was very keen to change the, the image of the pub. And do you know why Hannah chose you? I think, she, if you can believe it, she's a fan of my Right, OK, but so she's I a get, fan. It's a lie, think... move on. Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to the Mitchell and Glove? No. Where is this uh, pub, David? Which part of the country? It's in Swansea. What? Swansea? Because mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe David. I can imagine his mind going, I've got to think of something quick. And, he, and even then he's thinking of middle class things. Swan, Swansea. I'll say that. <laughs> Is it themed inside? <laughs> I'd be very hurt if I'm not on all the menus. <laughs> it's a gastro pub, is it? Not well, in Swansea. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I believe what it is is a flat-roofed pub. One of the reasons I think it's named after me is that I wrote in my book that I had a theory that flat-roofed pubs are always bad. That basically, you never get nice food in a flat-roofed pub. You might get eaten by a dog. <laughs> and and, uh, and Hannah said, this is going to be a nice flat roof pub that does nice food. All right. By which I don't mean a carvery. <laughs> you don't like carveries? No. <laughs> <laughs> what about Stephen Mangans? What was yours again, Steve? Uh, we used to uh, befuddle, well, annoy our miserable neighbour by putting items of clothing on his washing line after he pegged his laundry oh, out. Yeah. And where was this? Crouch End. And when was it? Oh, 15 years ago, probably. And what's your relationship with Hannah? Yeah, Hannah is my mate James's younger sister. 
But is, was she living with you? She was the three of us in the house, yeah. What kind of thing did you used to put on there? I mean, just, just shirts? Or... Well, it started one day, he came round and complained, and, we were, and then we, we were sitting up in her bedroom, looking out the window, and he put his washing out, and I said, I'm going to go and put a sock on his washing line. <laughs> He liked everything to be very precise, and what he'd do is he'd come in, and when he'd take the washing off, we'd watch him every day, he'd fold it, he'd put all the socks together and put them in the washing, you know, rather than just chucking it all in, mm. and then doing Sorry, it Sorry, the, the person next to you is thinking, what's wrong with that? <laughs> 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 so we put a blue sock on, went up, and then he came out, and he put all his washing away hours later, and mm. he was like... And it was just very fun. We just found it. I mean, it doesn't sound funny and now. In, in total, <laughs> we found it hilarious. In total, how much did you did you put? On, well, he, it went on for about then... it went out for about six months. I know. We'd Gox go to really... charity shops and buy stuff to put on his washing line. I know Gox's going to ask it, so I'll ask it for him. Did, on a Sunday, did you lay out? <laughs> the clothes? Is he? You're saying then with with Hanny, you both went out together. Pulling and to to attract some guys, you ate ants. ants. We weren't out. We were at school. How old were you? Um, about fifteen or sixteen. Right. Would we... you mind standing next to Hannah just so I can work out the visual to see whether you look like you should be at school together? Yeah. Take my shoes off. I think you're mixing up age and height. They're completely different. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a stylist. Oh, here we go. Before you know it, they'll be naked. <laughs> OK, similar age. It could work. <laughs> so you were at school? Yeah. Right, and what, there's, a, there's a boy there that you like? Yeah, and he was called Paul Brooks. Paul Brooks, OK, and you thought the best way to impress Paul is to eat some ants. It was during a school production, so we were dressed... Uh, we were in Greece. Uh, so <laughs> what? Greece the musical. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> we I, thought you, I, I thought you said we're in Greece and you know the economy's like this. It's so all we can eat. <laughs> the ants. <laughs> How many did you eat in total? I ate about 24. No way. <laughs> 24? Yeah. Nice. How many did Hannah eat? About 23. Ah, loser. <laughs> and that's why you got Paul Brooks. <laughs> and, yeah, and did you get Paul Brooks? No, he just stood there the whole time and then I, I thought felt she's sick. stupid yeah. and walked yeah. off. <laughs> he he just sat there <laughs> chewing on his cockroach, going, This is so <laughs> And what made you stop at 24 then? I mean, surely you, you could tell by his eyes after two or three that this wasn't working. <laughs> we just carried on, and then it, the interval was over, and we had to go and do the second half of Greece. This, this was, was the during interval. the show. Yeah. During the Ooh. show. You tell me more. Out. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, um, we, we need an answer here. So, Lee's team is Hannah mm. Stevens' washing line prankster. Is he's fellow anteater or David's pub landlady? What do you think? We can rule out the, the, the strange theme pub. Oh, thing. thanks. Yeah. Well, you know, oh. So what is it about my face smiling oh, no, no. politely next to a boxing glove no, that makes no. you think people won't want to get drunk? <laughs> I think, I think it's Stephen. I think it's Stephen's telling the truth. You think Stephen's yeah. telling the truth? Charles? I think he probably is, actually. You think it's Stephen? Yeah. Well, I think it's Izzy, but I will yet. go with the majority. Well... Then I've got someone to blame. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, Hannah, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Hannah, and in order to impress a boy... <laughs> Izzy and I... ..what's oh, yeah. to see who can eat the most ants? <laughs> Thank you very much, Hannah. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth but also against the clock. We will start with... <coughs> it's Lee. When I was seven, I had to be a bridesmaid at my auntie's <laughs> wedding. <laughs> <laughs> when I was seven, I had to be a bridesmaid at my auntie's wedding as one of the girls who was supposed to do it was ill and the dress was a perfect fit. <laughs> What did the dress look like? Um, I describe the colour as traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they have to have a bridesmaid? Why couldn't they just say, if she's not well, let's move on? Uh, I think you're mixing it with admin. <laughs> if someone says to me, put the dress on, I'd put it on. You know that, don't you? <laughs> well, Do as I'm told. <laughs> so you didn't display any reluctance to put the dress on? I may have said, you know, 
mother, father. I am a seven-year-old boy, despite the fact that I am two years younger looking and slightly androgynous. But please, give me some dignity. How much and my father turned around to me, he said, son, when I was your age... He had a pipe. When I was your age, <laughs> my father asked me to put a dress on, and I put it on, and his father before him... And his father before him. <laughs> You'll put me dress on, and you'll smile. <laughs> was there a page boy as well as bridesmaids at this wedding? I was a mm. page boy once, and if another boy had dressed up as a girl, I would have felt it was fair mm. game to I persecute that, him. Well, true, but luckily the page boy came up to me, little Sharon, and he said... <laughs> well, he, said he said, tell me about it, you know, you think you've had a rough day. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a 24-year-old. <laughs> How much notice did you get? Pardon? How much notice did you get? Quite, quite a few people. So I think, you know, from memory, quite a few people were... Oh, oh. No, 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 oh, you no. idiot! How much warning? <laughs> How far in advance? Oh, I genuinely thought you meant notice. How much, how much, how much notice did you get? <laughs> that was a genuine one. Yeah. Oh, how much notice how did much I get? Oh, everyone thought I was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous at first, but then I felt like a princess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. How much, how, much, how much in advance did they yeah. tell me? Yeah, how um, much notice? How much notice did they tell you know what? That would be embarrassing if this was on television, wouldn't it? <laughs> Um, I got, uh, I think I got, like, I don't know, five hours or something. She was ill at the last minute and... I just think you would have absolutely refused at Well, that listen, age. I said, Dad, I don't want to do it. And he went, listen, <laughs> I'm not your dad, I'm your mother. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm sick of you constantly calling me Dad. <laughs> the other one, that's your dad. <laughs> How long did you have to keep the dress on? At what point in the proceedings? I mean, did you have to wear it right through to the disco and, uh, you know... Or My dad you... says you'll keep it on till the, uh, till the music starts. <laughs> da 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 Because, unfortunately, the cabaret act had cancelled because of illness. <laughs> so what are you thinking, David? Does that uh, sound at all plausible to you? What do you think, Evie? I really want it to be true. Well, then say true. <laughs> I actually think it could genuinely be the biggest load of drivel I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be true. I don't think it's true. Mm. Lie? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Lie. Conclusively, it's a lie. Lee, truth or lie? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be true, didn't I? Yes, it's a lie. Uh, Lee wasn't a bridesmaid at his auntie's wedding. And that noise signals time is up and it's the end of the show and I can reveal that David's team has romped home by five points to one. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not just a team game and my individual liar of the week this week is Stephen Mangan. Yeah. Yes, Stephen Mangan. Uh, today's is hardly a surprising victory, as when it comes to lying through his teeth, Stephen has more to work with than most. Good night. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Have I got news for you is next, and Joe Brand is in the hosting seat. Then Lee Max back, and thankfully not in a bridesmaid's dress. Jealousy tactics in not going out at 9.30. While later, Dwayne, The Rock, Johnson and Lord Sugar on The Graham Norton Show at 25 to 11.